Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord for a wonderful, awesome time uh, that he has granted us the grace to be together once again. I want to believe God that you are excited that you are in the second half of the year. I want to believe God that since morning or since last night, you have been giving glory to God that you made it into the second half. You have not been substituted because in a team, after the first half, anyone that will not be needed is due to be substituted. They will be taken out of the game and replaced with another. But I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord, you will not be replaced in the name of Jesus. The power of God most high in the, his infinite mercy will keep and sustain you and you will be among those that we see the end of this year in the full fulfillment of what God have designed you to achieve this year in the name of Jesus. Obviously, the pandemic had actually impacted on our plans. But does that really matter to God? I don't think that can stop God from doing what he wants to do in your life. Because we have seen all through the scripture that at a time when some men were actually sinking, that is the time God lifted some people up. And that's why tonight we are entering into this second half in a prophetic mood. And I will be speaking on seven prophetic directions for our life in this second half of the year seven prophetic di directions for our life in this second half of the year. So let's start from what God has to tell us in Revelation chapter 21, verse number five. Revelation chapter 21, verse number five. He said, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, write, for these words are true. He that seated upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things, all things, all things. I hope somebody will... Uh, uh, understand and underscore that all things. He said, behold, I make all things. And who is saying it? He that seated upon the throne. He that command the earth and the head, earth has no choice, has no option, but to obey according to his instructions. Because he created all and he has authority over all. So he that seated upon the throne is saying to you, you can mention your name at this hour, that behold, he makes all things new for you. When all things become new, what happened? Old experiences are trashed. Unpalatable experiences are thrown away. New thing attracts smile. It attracts a, 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 a comfort. People love new things. You want to be around it. And he said, write it down. Because it's so powerful that nobody and nothing can change it. So, in the month of July, we will be focusing on the team, the new season. A new season. A new season. There have been a season of fear, a season of panic. There have been a season of uncertainty. There have been a season of pain in your life, a season of disappointment, a season of uh, sickness, a season of uh, loss of finance, but now you are entering into a new season. The second half is a new season. A season is longer than time. So you are not just entering into a time that is going to be short. 
you are entering into a new season and we are entering this new season in a prophetic dimension and follow me brethren as i take you through what i've been praying and what god have led me to to decree over our life for which you are going to also decree over your life in the name of jesus christ in isaiah chapter 62 isaiah chapter 62 verse 6 and 7 the bible said i have posted watchmen on your walls jerusalem they will never be silent day or night you who call on the lord give yourself no rest give them no re give them no rest until they establish jerusalem and make her new her the praise of the earth he said i have set a watch over you and you also that stay in the place of watch what is a watch what is a watch there are men who pray 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 i'm emphasizing this but because the second half of the year are for men who we pray they are for people who we pray secret will be unleashed in the place of prayer secret will be released in the place of prayer old battles will be trampled down in the place of prayer victory extraordinary will be gotten in the place of prayer why because god have set watchmen and he said give him no rest until he until he establish until he make jerusalem a praise in the earth you are that jerusalem you are that jerusalem if you will not rest in the place of prayer if you will not slack if you will not be lazy god is saying that he will never give every authority that are supposed to minister to you he will never give them rest until they release that which belongs to you until they establish you until they make you what you ought to be therefore the first prophetic direction is prayer prayer by prayer you are going to take victory by prayer you are going to run and you will overtake if you will not sleep on your horses if you will not relax if you will not allow comfort to overtake you because the danger as i was minute as i was meditating the lord told me that there is somebody among those that will listen to me tonight that he will give you early victory he said but hope you will not relax hope you will not relax if you are the one say amen to that but make sure you don't relax because god is saying this is not a time to relax he said give yourself no rest give yourself no rest if god suddenly bless you that is not the time to enter into your, your your recession and begin to relax if god suddenly silent your enemy if god suddenly lift you above your enemy it's not a time to rest it is a time to give yourself to watching watching in the morning and i don't want to believe god because i'm starting a session i started this afternoon and i'm going to continue i'm going to continue the the the, the four watch of the day i'm praying by 6 a.m praying by 9 a.m praying by 12 noon praying by 3 p.m. and praying by 6 p.m. We want to believe God that God will help us to con uh, continue this circle, but I'll be doing that on our Misla audio channel so that even if it's 10 minutes at this time, we set it aside, keeping watch, keeping watch. Watchmen are those that will harvest the benefit of COVID-19. COVID-19 had no choice. It will release the benefit in it. But watchmen are the men that will be able to take those benefits. I want to pray for somebody. As you tally in the place of prayer, victory is certain for you in the name of Jesus. The second prophetic direction is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 8. He said, the Lord sworn by his right hand and his mighty arm never again will i give your grain as food for your enemy never again god said never again will i allow the enemy to plunder you 
Never again will I allow the enemy to take away from you. Never again will I allow, will I allow spiritual thief to steal from you. Why? You have suffered enough wastages. Sickness have taken the largest part of your income. Either you are sick, your family member, or your parents, somebody, somehow, they will call you, and you have to release that money. But God is saying that never again, he swore by his right hand, that never again will he allow you to suffer any consumption from the wicked. Isaiah chapter 65, from verse 21 to 22, he said, you will plant vineyard and you will eat it. Meaning you will earn your salary and you will spend it the way you like. You are not going to spend it on sickness. You are not going to spend it on unnecessary police case. He said he will make sure that what you earn, you are able to use it and you see the impact. I prophesy every source of wastages in your life. The almighty God in his power, as he has promised, will block them in the name of Jesus. In Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, verse 25, he said he will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the palmer worm. That is what God is promising you this time. God is saying no more wastage. You looked at your bank account, the money that had passed there is so amazing. But today there is nothing to show for it. You look at what has come into your hand. Your mates have built houses. But you have not been able to even buy land. Why? Because there is a pocket leaking and they are wasting your resources. Before you earn it, a problem is waiting to take it away. But God has sent me to you in this second half of the year. He says he's going to block that drainage. He's going to block that source. He said never again will he allow any form of wastage in your life. I think you want to say amen to that. You want to say amen to that. A very big amen to that. Direction number three. Direction number three, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. I call that divine direction. It sounds common. It sounds simple. But that is the biggest asset anybody can enjoy from the Lord. That's the biggest you can enjoy from the Lord. Why? Because when God tells you what to do, when he tells you where to go, when he tells you when to go, then your life begins to run in the direction that you will uh, enjoy everything. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Isaiah 30, 21. He said, And thy ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk in it. When ye turn to the right, the right hand, and when you turn to the left, meaning anywhere you find yourself, anywhere you go, God said, he will send you direction. He will lead you. You will not invest in what will bring you wastage. You will not go into a contract that you will not make profit. You will not marry where you go and regret. You will not go into a marriage that will turn out to take your life. He will not allow you to go on a journey where you will not return again. He said he, you will hear a voice. When you want to turn, he will tell you that is not the way to go. He will guide you in the most simplest thing. I therefore prophesy to you and I decree in the name of Jesus that leading that will make you to be ahead always. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. God has promised a divine leading, divine direction. God has said you will hear his voice, his own voice. When you hear the voice of God saying this is the way to go, then you cannot make mistake. Then you cannot run into losses. You cannot die by accident. Why? He will tell you that is not a time to go out. Even the car can refuse to start. But make sure you are sensitive to the things of the spirit. I decree in the name of Jesus, you have made mistake in the past, but mistake is over in your life. Mistake is over in your life. That mistake that you are still regretting up to today, I say, if I had listened to God, it wouldn't have ended up like that. God is sending me to tell you this hour ah, that, look, I will make good again. I will make good again that which you think you have lost in the name of Jesus. Direction number four. Direction number four is 
Isaiah chapter 30, verse 23. Isaiah 30, verse 23. He said, I will send you rain in due season. Meaning, rain represents the entirety of blessing. Because in those days, the people are predominantly farmer. You need rainfall for the crops to grow. You need rainfall for those that have animals, for, for the grasses to grow so that their animal can graze. You need rainfall for their animal to have water to drink. So the totality of blessings is encaptioned in that world. I will send you rain, favor, mercy, every of it is gathered into that world. I prophesy to somebody, all that you need to prosper this year, all that you need for the rest of the year, the almighty God will send it to you in the name of Jesus. God will command the earth. He will command the heaven. It is heaven's mandate to bless you. When God commands the heaven, heaven have no choice. He releases rain. He releases abundance of rain over the land. And at that time, everybody rejoices because he brings refreshment. I am praying for you. You have had a rough first half of the year. You have had the half of the year that did not deliver that which you expect. But this second half coming in a dimension that everything will be fulfilled by God's prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Then the, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, the fifth direction. Isaiah chapter 65, Isaiah 25 verse 6. Isaiah 25 verse 6. God began to command. God began to command. He said, on this mountain, on this mountain, the Lord Almighty prepared a feast of rich food for all the people, a banquet of aged wine and best meat and the finest of wine. What is that? What does that mean? The best of the year is about to be released to you. The best that have been stored up, the best that have been kept, the best of all things is about to be released to you. I prophesy by the mercies of God, the best part of the part of the rest of this year shall be released to you in the name of Jesus. The Lord said on this mountain, on that place where you are, on that job that you are doing, on that same business, on that same career path that you are, he said he will release and prepare a feast. He will prepare a time of celebration for you. And not just that alone. In verse 7, he said on this mountain, I will destroy the shroud that enfold the people, the sheet that cover all the nations, meaning whatever have not made you visible for your blessing, whatever have not made you visible for people who need you, the covering that have made your life, your life somehow unattractive. God said on this mountain, the mountain of prayer, as you will be praying, as you will stand in the place of watch this year, he said he will remove every covering. Joy to that sister. What have been troubling your, ma your marriage and say you will not marry. God is saying this time, he's removing it. As we enter this second half of the year, prepare for your wedding. Prepare for your wedding. I'm saying it with all certainty. If, you, if your faith can carry it between now and December, it doesn't matter what they say is outside there, Corona or whatever. God is saying prepare for your wedding. Why? Because the cover sheet that covers your life, that covers your glory, that covers your manifestation, God is saying he's tearing it and he's taking it out. Not just that. He said, and he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord, that's verse 8, verse 8 of that uh, Isaiah 25, verse 8 of that Isaiah 25. He said, I will swallow up death forever. This, the sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. You have wept as a family. You have had crisis. The Lord said, at this time, one of the prophetic direction for you is that he is promising you that he will make sure he wipe away tears and no more death in your family. Do you believe that? If you believe it, say a very powerful amen. Say a very powerful amen. And the sixth direction, the sixth direction, 
is in verse 9 of that Isaiah chapter 25. He said, in that day, we surely, we say surely, this is our God. We trust in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Somebody, you are entering into a time where it is no longer going to be said that where is your God? But it's going to be said that surely you trusted this your God and he answered you eventually. Surely you trusted, you proclaimed this your God and he showed up for you that your God is trustworthy. I don't know who you are and you're almost thinking that, ah, and people were thinking that, ah, ah, where's my God? God is asking me to tell you, this is the time that he's going to show up for you in a way that people will agree with you that this your God is the one that saved you. When God is involved, don't let men deceive you by the way they think. God said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your own. As God will begin to do those things that he said he will do, you must understand that there are a few things that you, we need to do. I will give you the seventh prophetic direction and then I will take quickly mention a few things to you. The seventh prophetic direction for us this year, this the half of the year, is that the hand of God is resting on all of us. The hand of God is resting on that your business. The hand of God is resting on that family. It's resting on your health. In verse 10 of Isaiah 25, Isaiah 25, verse 10, he said, the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain, but Moab will be trampled in their land. Meaning Moab represents your enemies, represents your opposition, represents your afflictors. He said he will trample them. He said, but the hand of the Lord is going to rest on your family. And remember, when the hand of the Lord rests on the king, or, or, or on Elijah, after the king ran with the horse, the hand of the Lord rested upon Elijah, and Elijah ran and overran the king. I prophesy, as the hand of the Lord rests upon you in this second half of the year, you will gain divine speed in the name of Jesus. Speed to recover all that seems to have been lost. Speed, oh God, to recover everything that time seems to have taken away. As the hand of the Lord rests upon you, you will recover with speed in the name of Jesus. How do I know? In 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 6, the children of the prophet, they wanted to expand their coast. They wanted to ex expand their, their, their frontiers. And they borrowed an axe to cut wood and to prepare a new tent. But alas, the, the tent fell into the deep. It seems all hope were dashed. I don't know who you are. You borrowed money at the beginning of the, late last year to go into a new direction of business. And suddenly, this COVID-19 came and it seems everything have gone into the drain. And you are saying, God, how will I recover it? Go to that scripture and you will see that and by the prophet, the axe head was recovered. I stand in the, in the place of the son of a prophet because I belong to the redeemed Christian church of God. And Baba Deboye is our father. I stand today as the son of a prophet and I decree anywhere that that axe head in your life have fallen, recover it now in the name of Jesus. I say recover it now in the name of Jesus. That business that seems nothing will happen again. God is sending me to tell you a surprise turnaround will happen. A surprise turnaround will happen that you yourself may not understand. Because in the same second king chapter three, second king chapter three, he said, and in that day, they thought they were stranded, the people of God. And God said to them, you will not see rain. You will not see sun. He said, but you will see water. That which you lack shall fill the whole earth. We feel everywhere. He said, and it so happened that as they woke up the following morning, 
in verse 18, 17 and 18 of that passage, they woke up the following morning in verse 21, they discover, according to the word of God, everywhere have been filled with water. You may not know how it's going to happen, but God is going to surprise you. I say God is going to surprise you. Your, your, your blessing is not going to be by human logic. Your blessing is not going to be by human calculation. If it is by human calculation, it will not come now. But because it is going to be divinely orchestrated, because it's going to be divinely provoked, you will discover that even where it appears that there is an imminent meltdown, you will enjoy a building of. Because what is said concerning you is that while others are saying there's a casting down, you will say that there is a lifting. I prophesy in the name of the Lord. I prophesy by the power of the Most High. In the name that is above every other name, you will enjoy a lifting in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand as the son of the prophet and I decree today, whatever have not been working in your life, in second, in, in second Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 21. 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 21. The people of Jericho came to, 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 to Elisha as he was returning where he received the mantle of power. And they complained about what had not been working well in that land, what had not been working well in their family, what had not been working well. And he said, don't worry. Get me a cruise of salt, a new cruise, and get me salt. And as they brought it, and he went to the source. Today, I am standing as the Elisha of your time. And I'm going to the source where things have refused to work. And I'm decreeing to those sources right now, be healed in the name of Jesus. He went to the source of the water that they said was not performing. The water that was breathing dead the water that was causing pain. And he went to the source of that water and he healed the source. Today, any one of you suffering from generational affliction, your source have been polluted. Your, before you were born, your source have been polluted. I stand on the prophetic altar of the Most High and I decree your source is healed in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how many generations have passed without it being healed. Several generations passed after Joshua caused that land and they were not able to do anything about it. But a generation came and said, they said, no, we no longer want to live under this cause. And Elisha said, by my word, this water is healed. From that day, the water was healed. The water of your life is healed. The water that is not allowing good things to flow towards you. The water that is not allowing your blessing to locate you. The water that is not allowing your life to radiate fragrance that we are attract favor. The water that have made your life stale and rusty. Today, I heal that source in the name of Jesus. I stand on the prophetic power of the Most High and I decree from your beginning to your end is healed today in the name of Jesus. As God live it, it shall never be said again that you suffer any loss in the name of Jesus. This second half of the year, you will arise, you will pursue, you will overtake, and you will recover. You will arise, you will pursue, you will overtake, and you will recover. I want to believe God that somebody is here tonight and you are set for your next level. In conclusion, allow God to lead you in this second half. Allow God to lead you in this second half. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, he said, be not wise in your own eye. In all your ways, he said, just acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I want to believe God for somebody tonight that you will allow God to lead henceforth. You will allow God to lead moving forward. You will listen to him. You will let him take the decision. The, the, the decisions. You will suggest it in the place of prayer. You will wait. You will allow him. You will listen. Brethren, this second half of the year is a time you need to learn how to listen. You need to learn how to listen. Because God is not going to leave you without a direction. 
But if you don't listen, you can move ahead of God and it can be dangerous. You can move when God have not said, ask you to move and it can be catastrophic. But if you will listen, if you will develop a relationship with God, if you will watch, if you will stand in the place of prayer, if you will make prayer a lifestyle, if you will study the scripture, I was excited yesterday when my wife was sharing with me that the women are doing what they call Bible challenge. And they want to challenge themselves to read the Bible in one year. And they have started posting the calendar, encouraging each other to read and then come up with what you are able to pick. That is, those are people who are preparing for the second half. Because the secret of second half prosperity is hidden in the scripture. Don't think it's hidden anywhere. Strategies are already failing. We don't know the end of what we are facing now. Only those who will operate in the spiritual realm will be able to rise above the COVID pan pandemic. Because COVID pandemic cannot understand the spiritual. But they have studied the physical. They have studied medicine. And they have launched this satanic attack. But I believe from the superior end of the Most High, he shall arise and defeat Corona for us in the name of Jesus, but learn to listen to God. He has a message for you. How is he going to pass it? God does not speak in one language. He speaks in different forms. But if you are attentive, you will hear him. He's a father. When he speaks, his own hear him, and they will understand. I pray you will not miss your divine instruction. I pray that everything God has told us, in this second half that he's going to do, that he's going to release to you, that he's going to send you rain, that he's going to rebuke the devourer that are destroying your land, that he's going to re rebuke those that are taking your profit away, that he's going to, to, to teach you, he's going to lead you, that he's going to speak to your mountain to begin to perform. All shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. I want to bless God for your life. Even if you are here and you have not given your life to Christ, the most deadly virus on earth is the virus that will not allow you to serve God, will not allow you to have a relationship with God. Because why fear that who, who can kill the flesh but cannot kill the soul? But there is one that can kill both the flesh and the soul. Therefore, you need to have a relationship with God. If you have not given your life to Christ, can you just bow down with me right now and say, Father, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I need to benefit from these new directions. You have given us scriptures of what you intend doing. You said on this mountain, you will prepare a feast, meaning somebody's wedding is coming very soon, meaning somebody's name is ceremony is coming very soon, meaning somebody's promotion is coming very soon. Oh God, my father, I want to benefit from this. Therefore, I run back to you, save my life. Embrace me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to thank God for your life. We have started and it's going to be prophecy and prayer and seeking God's direction all the way in this July. I'm going to be coming up live on Misla and also my, 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 my pastors with me every 6 a.m. That prayer it's not going to stop. We're going to go to the next level. So please put it in your plan to join us. And from tomorrow, by the grace of God, as God leave it, giving us the grace as we finish praying by 6 a.m., we are going to also move by 9 a.m. We will have a session by, by, by 12 noon. We'll have a session by 3 p.m. We'll have a session and by 6 p.m., we'll have another session. It may not be more than 10 minutes, but join us because it's going to be an hour of revelation for you. God bless you. Real good. If you are, know you are children that are, are taught and of the Lord, and where love exists, exchange is not inconvenience. Where love is strong, Giving is never a struggle. God did not struggle before he released his only son. And I want to believe you will not struggle before you, you give something worthy to the Lord this evening.
So please, the account is displayed on the screen. You can give your offering freely and also pay your tithe through the same account. As I receive, I'm always praying for you. And as you keep serving the Lord, you will not stop having in the name of Jesus Christ. Till I come back again at 11.59 tonight. Tonight is a night of prophetic declaration and entering into the second half through prophetic word of God. Join us at 11.59 for one hour from 11.59 to 1 a.m. for a time of prayer. Till I see you, testimony is unfolding in your family. God bless you and thank you for joining us.